Let's say you're starting out in Creo Schematics and you don't have anything set up yet. I'm going to create a brand new design and here it gives us a default name and maybe I'm going to just call this my test for now. And you have this option here to use a template. You could check it and then use the browse button. You're like, hey, I don't have a template yet that I can use. It's looking for a file with a .rsdt extension, which is essentially a zipped up design that already exists. So let's cancel out of here. And I will click the OK button to create my design. Oh, let's uncheck default temp or use template. Let's click the OK button. And here we have our Design Explorer. We have no sheets in here. If I go to the Catalog Explorer, I've got nothing in here. If I go to maybe my design templates, they do have a few sheets set up for you, but these are all set up for block diagrams. Uh, and so again, right now, I don't have anything to use. Luckily, if you go to the Get Started tab, you are able to create a new design using the sample catalog. What happens is when you get Creo Schematics, in the load point, there is a demo database that already exists. So you can navigate to it, but using the sample catalog button allows you to create a new design. And I'm going to call this my template starter because I'm going to start off using this template that they provide and then I'm going to modify it to my needs. Here we have some sheets that come in here. I'm going to come back to the sheets in a moment and get rid of some of these. Let's go to the design tab and some of the different things that you'll want to have set up in your own template are your global parameters. Over here on the left, we have our different object types. And here we have the different parameters that are available for us to use. And so generally, I don't create too many additional parameters. As long as I have the ones that are necessary for logical referencing, exporting XML files to Creo Parametric, I am fine. But again, you could create the additional object types that you want and add in another other additional parameters. But let's close out of here. The next thing that you might want to configure are grids that you want to use. And so in here we have four different grids that come up. Hey, they use pen number one. I prefer pen number four. So I might use the add button in order to create a new grid using the pen color that I want. Let's cancel out of here. Another thing that you will typically set up are your different location sets. Let's go to the rows and columns drop down list. Here we have the location set explorer and you can create sheets without a location set, but here we also have a default. You can see where the labels will be positioned on the sheet. If you wanted to add other additional ones, you could put them on the top as well uh, or not. And here we have the ones for our different design sheets. I'll come back in here and reset the numbering after I get rid of some of the sheets. Let's close out of here. And let's cancel out of that. Uh, let's go back to the diagramming tab. A big thing that you're going to want to have in your templates are different objects from the catalog. And here are some of the different blocks that we get from the demo database. If I go into some of these different ones over here, like for wiring, we have other different folders and we could go and select, hey, there are some different lamps that they provide. Let me go in here some more. All right, so again, here you can see some of the different objects that they provide you to begin with. Also, some default ports that you can use and groups, a few different predefined cables that they have for you. Well, just a handful. Uh, let's go take a look at fibers Again, we have a few different wires that are set up for us all 20 gauge uh, But again, you're typically going to want to set up the ones that you use They just give you a few as a starter in here, but I'm gonna start off by changing some of the default templates So let's go to the design templates over here. Here. We have the C size one Let's open that one up and yeah, it's okay to begin with but you know, again, since it comes from PTC, they're going to have their company on here. You could put yours in there if you want. Personally, I'm a little against treating schematics as drawings. 
So I don't like the idea of having revision blocks on here or even a, a title block, but again, they do provide these for you. Let's go back to the Catalog Explorer, and I use a lot of B-size. Let's open that one up, and again, changing it so that it's not going to have PTC on the templates there. So that's good. Let's close this sheet. Let's close that sheet as well. Let's go back to the Design Explorer. Now I'm going to change the sheets that are automatically going to be in here. So again, you can start off your templates so that you have sheets that you know that you are going to use. And I'm not going to use their default block diagram. Let me double click on it to show you what they have in there. Right, let's take a look at the circuit diagram. And here's the default wiring diagram. I will keep the block interconnect diagram, but I'm going to get rid of what they already have set up on here. So let's select these different entities and delete them. And again, I'm going to go to the block over here. Let's swipe a box over the PTC name. And let's go to sheet five. And I'm going to delete the instanced artifacts that they already have on the sheet because I'm going to use my own. Again, go to the title block and get rid of the PTC information. So I'm only going to use sheet four and sheet five. Let's get rid of these other sheets. I'm going to right click on them and choose remove and remove and remove. And I'm just going to leave sheet four and sheet five. And let's go to the properties and I'm going to rename this to be my bid. And let's do the same thing for sheet five. Let's rename that one. I'm going to call this my WID. So I'm going to provide someone with two sheets automatically to start off with in their different templates. But if I take a look at my location grids, you can see that because this was sheet five, it's got 19 and 20 in here. And the ones on the vertical are okay. It's using numbers for that one. But I need to reset the grids over here. So let's close out of the Design Explorer. Let's go back to the Design tab and go to the Rows and Columns drop down list and go to the Location Set Explorer. I'm going to select Default. And here we have the two sheets. We can see that the sequence numbering starts at 4 and ends at 13. Or Actually, this is sequence number four and five. Starts at 13, goes to 16, 17 goes to 20. You can use this icon to remove any gaps in sequence numbers or column numbers. And so that way, this is sheet number one, there's sheet number two. And here it's going from one to four down at the bottom and five to eight. Let's close out of here and then head back to the diagramming tab. And from the labels drop down, we can update all sheets. And that way, we have the correct location numbers on that sheet and this sheet over here. Uh, let's see, some other things that you would have in your templates. If I go to the design tab again, here we have our data table explorer. So here we have a few different data tables. Now this is not going to be sufficient for me to get working on my wiring, but it has a few different things in here that you can leverage. Uh, let's see, the last thing that I'm going to do for my template, let's go to set the template sheets. And let's select what we want to use for creating new blocks, ports, groups, and designs. I'll click on the Browse button over here. And for blocks, I'm going to use the new block template. For ports, I'm going to use the new port template. And for groups, let's use the new group template. And for designs, I am going to use the B-size template. I'm a big fan of B-size because that prints out at 11 by 17, uh, which most offices and people have access to. So that's good. Let's click the OK button over here. And so now I've got everything set in here. How do I go about changing this into a template? You go to the File drop-down menu and then choose Export, or excuse me, Let's go to save a copy, and I'm going to save it over in here. From the type drop-down list, you can change it from a regular design to a design template. And I'll just call this my MCAE template. 
let's click the save button and so it's going to end up packing this into a zip file in case I want to use this again let's hit the save button and now I can close this particular design now let's start a new design and I'll just leave the names in here let's check to use a template I'm going to go to my browse button and here is the template that I just created and saved I'll use the open button and then click OK and now I have a new design that I've created using my template and it's got all that stuff that I saved from the sample catalog that's provided by PTC let's say you want to go to the next step let's say that you want to have a template with the different kinds of wires and blocks and groups and cables that your company uses what should you do probably the easiest thing to do is to use a consultant and to the the best consultants that I know are uh, Cassandra de Leon Kemp from CDEL that's C-E-D-E-L solutions and also my buddies from Scotland at Virtual Interconnect. So I would reach out to uh, one of those two groups, uh, either Cassandra or uh, the Virtual Interconnect people, and have them set up what you need for using Creo Schematics. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.